Hello and welcome back to the third part of the first lecture on autonomous navigation for flying robots. In this video I will explain what it is that makes a quadruple hover at a certain position and what motion commands you have to give to the motors to make it move in a particular direction. So as you know a quadruple consists of four rotor blades and each of these rotors actually produces a certain um, airflow uh, and in turn an acceleration force onto the body of the quadrotor. And um, so if you, if you um, fire up all the four motors uh, at a certain speed, um, then um, you can, you can um, let take off. And uh, if the, the thrust of all the four motors combined together exactly compensates for Earth gravity, then the quadrotor will vertically stay in place. Um, the second thing then is that you have to make sure that the torques of all the four motors sum exactly to zero. Um, uh, because if you're, if you're not doing that, if say all the four rotors would rotate in the same direction, then that would induce a counter uh, torque that would start to um, rotate uh, the uh, quad rotor in, in, uh, around its yaw axis. And this is physically implemented as follows on a quad rotor. You always have um, two motors, uh, the opposing motors um, um, mounted on the same arm that are rotating in the same direction and uh, two um, rotors um, and the, the other two motors rotate in, in the opposite direction. And in this way the torque of all the four rotors sums to zero while the thrust compensates for Earth's gravity um, in hovering mode. Now for ascending um, you can just increase um, uh, equally the, the speed of all four motors and that will slowly move up your quad rotor. On the other hand, if you reduce the speed uh, equally of all four motors, then you, will, then you reduce the overall thrust and that will bring down your quad rotor then again. Um, now, uh, as I said, um, for um, keeping the orientation, it is important that the torques uh, of all four motors sum exactly to zero. However, you can also use this principle for inducing a certain rotation. For example, if you want to make the quadrotor turn to the left, you would um, increase the speed of the, the, um, the clockwise uh, motors, uh, the, the right turning um, quadrotors that will then lead to an induction of a, of a torque that will move the quadrotor to the left, that will turn the quadrotor to the left. On the other hand, if you want to turn right, then you would increase the speed of the um, um, uh, left rotating motors and decrease the speed of the right rotating motors. Of course, you have to make sure that if you want to keep your vertical position, uh, that the overall thrust of the four motors exactly equals uh, Earth gravity. Now, for moving forward, so forward in this schematic here is, is the up direction. If you want to move forward, uh, you can do as follows. You uh, reduce the speed of your, for, of your front motor uh, and um, increase the speed of your back motor. And in this way, the quadrotor will tilt forward. And in this way, the, the thrust is no longer perfectly aligned with Earth's gravity, but it's slightly um, uh, yeah, out, out of the axis and that will lead to an acceleration then um, in the forward direction. Similarly, if you want to fly backwards, you would increase the speed of the front motor and reduce the speed of the back motor and, um, and that will turn your quadrotor, um, 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 change the attitude of your quadrotor to, to the back and then again lead to an acceleration, to a horizontal acceleration of your quadrotor. Similarly, you can also move to the left and to the right uh, with the same principle and of course you can also combine all of these motions at the same time, for example, to move uh, to the left and at the same time rotate to the left um, or uh, to ascend and rotate uh, and so on. Good, so um, uh, this now brings us to our first and most important platform. As I said before, uh, we will use um, the Parrot AR drone as the, the example model throughout this course. Uh, if you happen to have one, you can also run all the exercises then on the Parrot AR drone. Um, but um, before we yeah, switch to the simulator, uh, it's also interesting to look a little bit more at the hardware side of things. So it consists obviously of four motors. Uh, those are so-called brushless motors. Uh, next week we will look again, uh, we will look more at how brushless motors work. Uh, they have a nominal uh, power consumption of 14.5 watts, so the overall quadrotor pulls around 60 to 80 watts um, with some loss uh, there. Uh, every motor has its own motor controller um, that runs a small CPU that uh, controls the motor speed. 
and uh, there is um, a strong um, uh, lithium polymer uh, battery included that powers the quadrotor between 10 to 15 minutes. And the battery sits uh, in the middle of the quadrotor. Good. Um, we've also looked already a little bit at the sensors. Um, here are more technical specs. So we have an uh, integrated uh, inertial measurement unit in, inside of the quadrotor that consists of a three-axis gyroscope, a three-axis accelerometer, and a compass or magnetometer. Um, we'll also see next week more what that means and how the sensing, what the sensing principle of that is. Uh, we have an ultrasound sensor to measure the distance to the floor and additionally a pressure sensor that, is, um, that can be used whenever the ultrasound sensor doesn't work anymore. So ultrasound only has a range of maybe three meters or so. So if you fly higher, especially outdoors, uh, ultrasound is not very useful, but uh, you can measure the air pressure and that then again tells you about your flying height. Uh, there is also a visual odometry sensor that is actually a camera running at 60 frames per second. We can also get, we will also use the images from this camera in the uh, remainder of this course for tracking the position uh, visually of the quadrotor. And there is a front camera at HD resolution um, um, uh, and that, uh, that we can also access from, from the PC. So at the core of the Parrot AR drone we have a fully um, uh, f full Linux system running uh, consisting of a, a Cortex-A8 uh, processor running at 1 GHz. Um, you can log in to, into that system just by telnetting uh, to, the, to this computer. Uh, it also has a USB 2 host adapter in it, so you can add additional memory for recording videos, for example, or a GPS module. Uh, there are also hackers out there who added attached uh, completely different hardware to that. Um, and it, it carries an, uh, a wireless ad network adapter uh, with which we can communicate then when the quadrocopter is in the air. And the good thing, and that makes it so attractive for us, is that the um, API is uh, fully open source. So it is possible to communicate uh, with, the, with the quadrotor um, and get all of the sensor data and send back motion commands um, um, to, the, to the quadrotor. Next to the Parrot AR drone, there are also many other platforms uh, currently available. Um, I've shown here a few that we also have in our lab. Um, also, I have to say that the Parrot AR drone is by far the most popular uh, among our students. Um, we also have an, an Ascending Technologies um, Pelican quadrocopter. Uh, that's the one here shown in the top right. Um, it's slightly larger than the AR drone. It um, weighs around one kilogram. And um, uh, the good thing there is that we have a full um, computer there uh, and actually a, du a Core 2 Duo uh, processor running Ubuntu and um, we also have several uh, USB plugs so we can add additional sensors like uh, a camera here uh, on the top or an RGBD camera like the Acer sensor uh, here at the front of the, of the, uh, the quadrotor. Um, Aztec sells um, different, uh, different other um, Platforms like the Hummingbird that is quite popular in Vijay Kumar's lab, um, but also the Firefly, which is their new model, um, uh, which has six propellers instead of four. Um, another very interesting platforms, uh, platform is the Crazy Flea um, uh, Nano uh, Copter. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's much smaller than uh, the other ones, um, but it, um, it's also more difficult than to extend. So the camera that we are mounting on it uh, only weighs four grams, and uh, this makes, of course, um, uh, life much, much harder if you have to use such a small and lightweight camera. Um, there are also a whole bunch of open source and community-based projects like the Microcopter, for example. Uh, you can buy the parts uh, from their website, but you can also um, uh, get them from an electronics market and essentially build it all by yourself. So this is now already brings us to the, to, this, to the next interactive exercise where you can test your understanding of the flight principle. Um, we've implemented a web-based uh, quadrotor simulator and um, you can um, program it in Python. And uh, we now want you to use this simulator to make the quadrotor move in a particular uh, direction. Um, so that means for the moment we assume that we have absolutely no noise. So the quadrotor will exactly follow uh, our commands. Um, but so you need to specify a sequence of motor commands that will make the uh, quadrotor ascend and descend and then fly forward and fly left. Um, and um, you can 
also find combinations of these modal commands to make the Quadruto follow a certain pre-specified pa uh, path. Um, of course, this is then completely without sensor data, so we're flying completely blindly through the environment. Uh, but nevertheless, we thought that this gives you a good understanding of the flight dynamics of a quadrotor, and that will then form a good basis for the remain remainder of this course. So have fun doing this exercise, and then see you back for the last exercise this week, where I'll briefly outline the history of quadrotors um, in general and in, in research.